everyone and welcome to my studio. I'm Diane and today we're going to enjoy painting one of the biggest and best signs of spring, the swallow. I'm going to do a loose background and then we're going to do a pen and ink drawing of some swallows flying in the sky and then we're going to watercolour them in. So first of all I'm going to take my large uh, wash brush, my mop brush, which is Pro Art um, Proline brush here. Uh, links available in the description below for if you want to go and buy one from Jackson's which is a wonderful source of supplies for you um, means you don't have to get everything from Amazon these people are really good um, and they ship internationally um, so I have that and then I'm going to do the sky as a loose wash first of all using cobalt blue so I'm just going to spray a little bit of water onto my cobalt blue pan here and I'm going to take an older brush, a smaller one than the one I'm going to use to paint with and I'm just going to mix up a reasonable amount of paint here fairly generously uh, in my little dish and uh, when I've got the consistency I think I need, it's a matter of trial and error a little bit and you're never quite sure but it doesn't really matter too much because if the sky is a bit on the light side you can always add another layer and it's not really likely to be too too dark, um, especially if you use a colour like like a cobalt blue, which is a very delicate uh, blue colour. So what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to spray water into the centre of this page. I'm not going to paint to the edges because I I very much like the look of painting um, a sky area which is basically, you know, going to within an inch or so of the edge and um, that somehow gives it more of a feeling of lightness. So I've just dampened my big brush a little bit, I haven't made it ringing wet and uh, then I'm going to pick up the paint that I'm going to use, being careful not to have any dabs of paint on there. I've got a, a little uh, blob there, just try it out on my palette. Uh, mixing palette. It's amazing actually how much paint a brush like this will suck up. Look, see it's, it's absorbed all of that. So now I can paint into the, uh, the wet page and I'm just dabbing. I'm not brushing, I'm just dabbing like as if you were doing a stencil and I'm not going over any of the areas twice. I'm just literally um, trying to randomly create a, a light sky type effect. So at this point you want to touch and touch and touch and touch but don't. Just leave it to dry. Go and make a cup of coffee. Okay so uh, this uh, background is now nice and dry, completely dry and uh, because it's on a nice stretched piece of paper which isn't too rough it's quite nice and smooth. It's not really um, highly uh, hot pressed but it's kind of halfway between hot pressed and cold pressed so it's got some texture as you can hear but it's not rough and that way the water just runs really well and makes all these cool back runs and blotches and things like that so it's all spread out and made a lovely summer sky for me to put my um, swallows on top of. Now I know that it always gets very nerve-wracking when you're going to be doing a design so what I like to do when I'm doing one like this um, if I'm going to go over a background I'd like to first of all think about it using tracing paper and so I've got a piece of tracing paper which I've um, put over the top there like that and um, I suggest you use something like this I've gone to Pinterest and I found um, this is a photo of some wallpaper and it's, it's quite nice and clear because it gives me the shape of the birds which is so archetypally swallow and although I'm not going to paint them to look like this at all I'm going to be using completely different colour um, combinations it does give me the shape so bearing that in mind I'm going to put that um, in front of me on my little um, easel there and then I'm going to uh, try drawing them and uh, then I can position them where I want them by uh, moving the paper around if you see what I mean. So 
it's um, obviously up to you where you put them and uh, and I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put mine yet but I'll do different uh, configurations and so on. So basically though when you're doing a swallow um, they have a kind of um, pointed sort of head like that and then the wing goes out like that both sides like that and then the body is a sort of oval shape like that and then the tail goes out in these two long um, uh, feathers I suppose they are or sections of feathers I don't know quite how that works and so it's like that and then uh, the wing comes back in a slight curve and then round like that There we are, and then usually the eye is going to be somewhere around there and this part here is generally speaking a little bit pink. And then on the, on the wing we've got an area here where the flight feathers are and on this side obviously the same, the flight feathers are here. And this part is light and this part is dark and this part is somewhat dark. So when it comes to painting it, we're going to um, make sure that we emphasize the shadows in this area here, this area and this area, and this will keep light, and this mostly. But that's from underneath. But then if you were going to go from on top, you'd have the wing more like that and then the body is here like that and then the tail goes out behind like that so then that's, that's your swallow shape. And then in this case, the whole thing is on the dark side. So you would paint all of that in a darker color. And then you might have one that was, um, I don't know, uh, diving or something like that. Uh, oh, okay, flying upwards a little bit, maybe like that with the body, <coughs> the beak and the head, and then the body, and then the tail, and then this wing is going to go like, like that. These are the flight with uh, feathers, flight feathers here, eye, there. Okay, so you can play around until you get an arrangement that you like. I would keep them that sort of size in proportion and I would probably think of putting, oh, I don't know, five or maybe more. Some of them can be a bit further away. You can have one, for example, in the far distance. Maybe like that, so he's just... there like that. A bit smaller, so further away. So I'll leave you to think about how you're going to arrange your swallows and I will arrange mine and then I'll be back to paint them. Okay so I've got my birds sketched into position now on this uh, background and I'm going to now I'm going to outline them or draw around them or sketch them depending on how you want to do it uh, with my pigment liner here, my Stettler. Um, uh, this waterproof pen uh, it won't run when I then go on to add the watercolour. So that's the next thing to do is to actually put these in in a permanent fashion now. And at this point you can obviously elaborate them a little bit if you want to, make them a little bit more detailed and maybe even enhance them if you feel that perhaps you haven't got them quite right. 
the main thing to remember is that they do have these amazing swooping um, tails, don't they? And uh, so that's what we want to emphasize. And after I've done this, then I'll um, rub out the pencil before I go in with a few touches of watercolor. I don't like the way I've done this one too close to, to that one. So that's the beauty of doing them in pencil first. You can just take them out if you don't feel that that's right. And uh, use a brush to get rid of the fragments of the eraser. <clears throat> I do definitely need one here though. So uh, maybe we'll put one like this. So I'll just carry on doing that and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I've got my design now drawn out, my little birds flying around in the sky. And a first of all thing I'm going to do is to take some white gouache and I'm going to mix that fairly thickly so that it's quite, quite strong, if you can say that white is strong, so quite, quite thick as it comes out of the tube or even thicker. This has been sitting here drying out in my little dish for a while so it's uh, I have to reactivate it but um, that's okay now. And then I'm going to paint in the white parts of the bird where the blue from underneath is showing through. So we don't want the blue and so we're going to paint the bodies white. doesn't have to be 100% accurate, just basically get rid of the some of the blue tint. Some of this will obviously, uh, it'll go lighter as it dries, so it won't stay pure white. And then we need to look at the wings and the, the top edge, the leading edge of the wing there underneath is also white, so here. So we'll just drop in some white there. So wherever we can see the tummy of the bird, then we're going to paint the top edge of the wings white. Like that. This one is uh, it's going to be white there but that one's going to be black so that will be darker so we'll leave that and this one here and if you don't think it's light enough you can just go back in with a bit more and then you can let that dry. There. Now for the colour of the wings I'm going to use black mixed with phthalo blue or Caribbean blue to make a very very dark slightly greenish slightly bluish and you can see what color that actually is when I dilute it down a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of blue in it to make it into slightly more interesting than black color. So basically black but with 
Phalo blue would be fine, I just happened to pick up Caribbean blue there, which is basically the same thing. Phalo blue, any blue really, or you could even use purple if you wanted to, just something to, to break the black a little bit. And then um, all we're going to do now is with a reasonably small brush, we're going to just uh, paint in the wings. They have a little bit of black on tops of their heads. It's a little bit darker at the base of the tail and then the wing like that. Make sure you use some a little bit of blue on some of them and we're going to put some pink there underneath. And the reason I'm doing these in pretty much um, black-ish is because when they're flying in the sky, of course, you can't really see anything other than their silhouettes. And we can see that it's coming to life now. If you did them bigger than I've done these, you could have fewer and you could do them bigger and you could do more detail on them, of course. But uh, I just decided that I would do them this way. Today, there we are, and then the only other thing we need to do is just to give them a little touch of pink underneath their chins, and for that, I'm going to use Potter's Pink, which since I started using it not that long ago, I have discovered that I really like this color partly because it granulates so nicely and when you use it in washes, it uh, has quite an interesting effect. And partly because it's such a natural color, it works really well as a, as a color for various different parts of animals uh, that you might want to paint. And um, so yeah, it's a, it's a great color. So we just drop a little bit of pink in on the tummy there and maybe a little bit um, into the wings just to break that up a bit. And that's where we start to go over the lines a little bit on purpose. And then we would let that dry and then I might want to do a little bit of um, a bit more line work on it but it, until I do that, before I do that, I'm going to do a bit of spatter so I'll take my um, sword liner and pick up some dark blue and I'm just going to drop some, some spatter into the sky. That's what the sky looks like to me because I have so many floaters in my eyes. don't know if you know anything about that yourself. It's a jolly nuisance. 
um, and then little bits of maybe I might pick up a little bit of white and emphasize the clouds with the toothbrush spatter. Not quite sure how this is going to work, so we'll see. Okay, it's not too bad. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and then probably come in again with a pen to add a few more touches. But apart from that, I think that's probably pretty much done. So there we are, that's the final painting. Um, I admit I did go in with my uh, light pen again and do a few more strokes just to sharpen up some of the edges. But apart from that, that's pretty much as it was when I finished just a few seconds ago. It's just now dry. Um, if you're interested in other paintings of swallows, I do have a lovely tutorial of three baby swallows on a branch of apple blossom, which you'll find if you go over to my uh, channel, you'll find playlists over there with all the different um, paintings all categorized so that it's easy to find the tutorial you're looking for. So take a look over there. It's a much underused resource from everybody um, who does uh, YouTube videos, finds nobody looks at playlists and what a shame because they're very helpful. Um, links in the description below to the things that I use to do this painting and if you use those links it'll take you through to either Jackson's or Amazon and that would be very helpful for us as we try to continue to grow the channel. Um, free traceable printouts on dianeanton.com so if you head over to my website you'll find those there and all you have to do is sign up make an account with us and for free you can download as many as you like as often as you like. And so I think that's about all I can squeeze in at the end here. So I'll say bye bye for now. And I'll see you again here soon, probably tomorrow with any luck if it ever stops raining. So bye bye for now, everybody. Bye bye.